Hello everybody, it's Mrs Neighbour back again with another story for you and today it's all about one of my very very favourite characters. There's lots and lots of stories written about this favourite, my favourite character, one of my favourite characters. I love lots and lots of stories. I wonder if you can recognise which favourite character I'm going to be reading about today. <laughs> yeah, it's Mog. And here's a lovely story about Mog. And we're thinking about foxes at the moment. And so it reminded me of one of my favourite characters, Mog. And it's when she encounters some foxes. And this story is called Mog on Fox Night. You know, it's so snowy today in my garden. And it looked just like this picture. Here we are, Mog. Just move you along there a little bit. Mog on Fox Night. Mog did not want to eat her supper. I think I might have to move you, Mog, just otherwise, as lovely as you are, you won't be able to see me very well. It was fish, but Mog always had an egg for breakfast. She thought, why should I have an egg for supper as well? She looked at the fish and then she looked at Mrs Thomas and she made a sad face. Dear, said Mrs Thomas, perhaps that fish isn't very nice. She just wants an egg, don't you, Mog? There's Mog, see if we can get her in on the corner. I'll give her some kitty food, said Nicky. Mog looked at the kitty food, then she looked at Nicky, and then she made an even sadder face. <laughs> I know, said Debbie. She wants an egg. And just then, Mr Thomas came in from the garden. Yeah, look, she's suddenly, she's suddenly stopped with the sad face and she's jumping up because she's seen an egg. You just want an egg, don't you, Mog? She knows what she likes. Mr Thomas had been putting the bin bags out for the bin man men to take away in the morning. Mr Thomas did not like doing the bin bags. Mr Thomas did not like it even more when it was snowing and he was cross. He doesn't want to have to go and pull the bin bags out in the snow. He said, you spoil that cat. That cat has been given two suppers and has left them both. She's not to be given an egg as well. In fact, if that cat does not eat every bit of these last two suppers, she will not get an egg her breakfast either and he put the egg back in the fridge <gasps> she's got to eat that fish and kitty food no egg for mog oh dear mog was very sad when the egg went back in the fridge she was also very cross she hissed at mr thomas and then she hissed at the fridge what cats do when they're very very cross and actually cats as well they wag their tails when they're cross dogs wag them when they're happy but when you see a cat wagging her tail that's time to back off out of the place then she ran through her cat flap and out into the garden she was fed up the garden was very cold and there was snow everywhere i saw lots of snow today it was so exciting there was no snow under the bin bags. So Mog crept under the bin bags and went to sleep. Yeah, she managed to be quite cold for Mog out there in that snow. She managed to find a little bit of shelter. Debbie and Nicky were sad too when they went to bed. Mog never eats anything she doesn't like, said Debbie. She'll never eat the kitty food and, and the fish. And she won't get an egg for breakfast, said Nicky, and she'll be so cross. Mog was cross, even in her sleep. Anybody who knows Mog knows that Mog has lots and lots of dreams. And this is one of Mog's dreams. I think she's dreaming that one of the bin bags is absolutely enormous. <laughs> she had a cross dream. 
It was a dream about Mr. Thomas. Mr. Thomas had put all the eggs in the world into a bin bag. He wanted to take the bin bag away and Malt tried to stop him. All the eggs in the world in the bin bag. <laughs> so she's so cross about that egg that it's gone into her dream. Suddenly, she woke up and there was snow all over her. The bin bag had gone. Had Mr. Thomas taken it away? She looked. Then she thought, this is too much. First they give me a horrible supper and now there's a fox in my garden. The fox had made a hole in the bin bag and was pulling things out of it. What's he doing? thought Mark. We know, don't we, the foxes are scavengers. He's probably in there looking for that tasty treat to eat. Foxes aren't as lucky as, as Mog. They don't get given kitty food and fish and eggs. They have to go and find their own food and scavenge for it. it looks as if that this fox is looking through the bin bags for some food. The fox ate one of the things he had pulled out of the bin bag. It was a chicken bone. Oh yeah, that'd be a tasty treat for a fox. Hungry fox, wouldn't it? Then he ate something else. It was a piece of fish. <laughs> Mog knew that piece of fish. She'd loved it in her dish. Not the day before. It had not been nice then. She thought, that fox is mad. Oh, fancy eating an old piece of fish. Don't the fox, the fox minded too much. I don't think the fox is as fussy as Mog, do you? I don't think it can afford to be. I think foxes have to eat whatever they can find. Then she saw something else. The fox had a little fox. No, actually two little foxes. Look, there's Mark watching in amazement. He was giving them bits to eat out of the bin bag. Look, they're eating bits of spaghetti. Can you see? <laughs> Some strings. And we know that little foxes or baby foxes are called cubs, don't we? Yeah. But one of the little foxes only wanted to play. It played with the snow and it played with a twig. Yes, fox cubs, cubs are very much like all children who love to play. You lot love to play, don't you? And it's how you learn. And that's how fox cubs learn too, by playing. And he played with an old tin. And then it wanted to play with Mog. Mm. I don't think Mog looks very interested in playing with fox cubs in the snow, do you? Let's see what happens. Mog thought, I don't want to play with that little fox. And she ran through her cat flap and back into the house. But the little fox ran after her. He stayed in the house. <laughs> ah! The other little fox ran after the first little fox. Fancy the little fox cubs getting into the kitchen. How funny. And then the big fox ran after them both. They're all in the kitchen now. I wonder what they're going to find. Mog thought, this really is too much. First they give me a horrible supper. supper. Then there's a fox in my garden. And now there are three foxes in my kitchen. The foxes liked Mock's kitchen. They liked the sink. Oh, look, they're playing there. And it looks as if fox, it's a mummy fox or daddy fox, has got the washing up brush. They liked the pots and pans. Oh, look, they're getting into the fruit bowl and eating all of the fruit. They think this is a wonderful place and they liked the kitchen cupboard. Look, they're exploring everything. Never been in a kitchen before. And the breakfast table and Mog's basket. And Mog thought, there are too many foxes in here. I'm going. And off she goes, leaving the foxes to it. I wonder what's going to happen when the Thomas family find them in there. She found a much nicer place and went to sleep. Very early in the morning, 
and she woke up and Debbie woke up too. She's forgotten all about the foxes, I bet. Debbie said, look who's in my bed. Why aren't you in your basket, Mog? Nicky said, I wonder if she's eaten her supper. They went down to the kitchen to see. Mog's two dishes were empty. She's eaten it, said Nicky. Don't think Mog's eaten it, has she? Who do you think might have eaten it? <laughs> I think it was the foxes. And they're just about to find them. Look! Da, da, da. Then they saw something else. Oh, I don't think it was Mog who ate it, said Debbie. Look, she can see the big fox and the two little fox cubs too. That was probably the fox's mummy. The foxes thought it was time to go home. So they ran off through the cat flap and ran off through the garden. It had stopped snowing and it was a lovely day. Off they go fancy seeing foxes in your kitchen. I'd be quite astonished. But Debbie and Nicky tidied the kitchen and they tidied up every bit. Oh, that's very nice of them, isn't it? And now you can go back in your basket, Mog, said Nicky. And just then, Mr and Mrs Thomas came in. Mr Thomas looked at the empty dishes. There, he said. What a good cat. I knew Mog would eat her supper in the end. <laughs> Isn't quite what happened, is it? We know what really happened. It's those foxes eating Mog's dinner. Debbie and Nicky said nothing. After all, they thought, no one really knew who had eaten Mog's supper. Well, I suppose that's true. We didn't actually, they didn't actually see the fox eating it, but I think it's pretty good guess to suppose that, that they actually did. Because Mog was determined not to eat that fish and that kitty food, wasn't she? Mog had a lovely egg for breakfast. <gasps> if only they would just give me an egg every day. I'd be perfectly happy for morning, noon and night. And she was very pleased. Look, there's Mog with a big smile on her face. Just keep giving me eggs. These. And also... The foxes were pleased too, all cosy in their den. And a fox's den is called an earth. And they dig it down under the ground. So it'll be perfectly warm and cosy in there under all that snow. In their earth, all curled up, ready to go to sleep. I wonder if they'll go back to Mog's house and see if they can find anything else to eat. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. So that was Fo Mog on Fox Night. And Take care, everyone. Keep an eye open. You might see, just see a fox when you're out and about or maybe in your gardens, especially at night time. And do check your bins because sometimes you see foxes there too. OK, you take care and I'll be back again with another story soon. Bye bye.